Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. I greet to all of you and I hope that all of you will have a good health today. So, I'm today I'm very, very happy to be with you all and I hope that all of you will have a good session with me today. And my before we start, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Noor Fawiza Binti Azhar. I am one of the lecturers from the Center for University Study, Masa University. And today I'm going to share with you guys the technique on how to answer paper for chemistry, IGCSE paper. Before we, before that, okay, I'm going to share with you guys my screen. So let's, I hope that you guys can see, see my screen now. Sorry for the Okay, so I hope you have, can you guys see my screen? Uh, sorry, Dr. Noor, you didn't share the screen. Uh, Dr. Noor? Uh, Dr. Noor, can, uh, you didn't show the screen? Dr. Noor?
Okay, hi, sorry guys for the technical issue. So let me start again. So hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. I bid to all of you and I hope that all of you in the good health. Welcome back to our part two IBCSE clinic series. And today I'm very, very happy to be with you all. And I hope that all of you will have a good session with me today. So before I start, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Noor Fawiza. I am one of the lecturers from the Center for Pre-University Study, Mahsa University. And today, I'm going to share with you guys the technique on how to answer paper for chemistry, IGCSE paper. So before, before further ado, so I'm going to share my screen. So I hope you guys can see my screen now. Okay, so for today, I'm going to focus more on the topic which is reactivity series of metal and electrolysis. Okay, so this question I took from May, June 2019. So let's read the question together. So the first question is, this specimen reaction occur between metals and metal ion. This specimen reaction can be used to determine the order of reactivity of metal such as lead, Pb, nickel, and I, and silver, Ag. So the ionic equation for a displacement reaction is shown below. So as you can see, nickel in solid plus Pb2 plus in aqueous given you the product which is Pb in solid plus nickel 2 plus in aqueous. And also from this equation, it gives you the ionic half equation. Nickel in solid, okay, giving the product which is nickel 2 plus in aqueous plus 2 electron. So that means if we donate 2 electron here. And also Pb2 plus in aqueous plus 2 electrons. So that means Pb ion, okay, will accept an electron to become neutral Pb or Pb in solid. So the ionic half equation show that the electron are donated by nickel atoms and accepted by lead ion. So the question asks you to identify the reducing agent in the displacement reaction. You need to give a reason for your answer. So here, in order to answer this question, you need to understand what is the definition of displacement. So by definition, displacement is a type of a chemical reaction in which more reactive metal will displace a less reactive metal from its compound. And also the definition of reducing agent here is an agent or we call as a reductant or reducer that will lose an electron. So as you can see here, the one that lose an electron is an element here. Okay, so nickel is undergo oxidation process. So those who undergo oxidation process is a reducing agent. So here you can write down which is nickel and or you can just give the chemical formula for nickel which is an I here okay and then you need to state the reason so the reason is because it lose electron okay then you will get one mark here and also one mark here so in, for this type of question I give you one hint here, you can do this formula, okay, which is we call as a oil rig. So what is an oil rig? Also, O here is represented as oxidation, okay, and here reduction, R here represent as a reduction, okay, while I L, I L here represent I lose electron. And Ig here represent I gain electron. So here, as you can see, nickel is the one that lose an electron. We call it as a process oxidation process. Okay, and then those who undergoes oxidation process is a reducing agent. Same goes with the reductions here. So reduction, which is I gain an electron. So here, Pb two plus will accept two electron to become Pb in solid. Okay, so I hope you guys clear about that. So next, we move on to the question two here. What is the general term given to the type of reaction 
in which electron are transferred from one species to another. Okay, so to answer this kind of question, there's a keyword here, which is you need to give the general term that involve electrons transfer. Okay, so for this case, it's involved electrons, those that involve electron transfer is a process of oxidation and reduction. But the general term for that process we call as a redox reaction. Okay, so call as a redox reaction. So actually, redox reaction come from the word, which is R-E-D, is reductions. And then OX here represent oxidation. So we make it short, it become a redox reaction. So this, those reaction is involved, which is electron transfer. Okay, next we move on to the question B here. The ionic equation for another displacement reaction is shown. As you can see, Pb is solid plus 2Ag plus in aqueous given you the product which is 2Ag in solid plus Pb2 plus in aqueous. So you need to write down two ionic half equation for this reaction. Okay, to answer this question, actually you can refer back to the question above here. Okay, so this is the example which is nickel in solid. Okay, it will undergo oxidation. So that means it will lose, I lose electron to become nickel 2 plus ion. Okay, so we go back to the question here. So you can see that Pb is solid reactant, which is the product at the end, it become Pb2 plus ions. So that means it undergo oxidation process. So what is the oxidation process? It tends to donate an electron or lose an electron. So the first equation is Pb is solid will undergo oxidation process, which is to donate two electron lose two electrons to become Pb2 plus in aqueous plus two electrons. Okay, then you will get one mark here. So next, we move on to the second ionic half equation. So here is referred to the silver ion and then at the end of the product, you will get a silver solid or neutral silver. So here, that means silver ion will accept the electron. So here you can write down Ag plus, okay? Don't forget the state will accept the electron, okay? To become 2Ag, okay? Solid, okay? Then you will get a one mark here. So one will be oxidation, which is tends to lose the electron and then Second half equation is will accept the electron to be electron Ag. So next we move on to the question C here. Okay, so I hope you're still with me. So question C, use the information in A and B to put the three methods lead, nickel, and silver in order of reactivity. So here you need to rearrange the metal which is lead, nickel and silver in terms of their reactions which is which one is the most reactive and which one is the least reactive. So in order to answer this question, you need to remember the reactivity series of metal. So you already know that metal are arranged based on their reaction, for example, toward water or dilute acid. So this question, the most reactive metal is an element which is nickel followed by lead and also silver element. Okay, so silver is the least reactive metal. So I want to give you the tips on how to remember the reactivity series of metal. Okay, so here in order to remember all the elements based on their position or we call it as the reactions towards water or dilute acid, you can use acronym here. For example, the most reactive method is at the top, such as potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium. So this element we consider as the most reactive. So that means it can react vigorously with water or dilute acid. And at the bottom here, such as copper, silver, and coal, we 
uh, has the least reactive towards water and also dilute acid. Okay, so how to remember all these chemical so, uh, element here? You can use acronyms such as please stop calling me a callous zebra. Instead, try learning how copper safe go. Okay, so you can use this acronym or you can make your own chronic so easier for you to remember the positions of metal based on their reactions okay next we move on to the question may june uh, 2019 question b here so nickel is a transition element nickel is a stronger than sodium you need to describe two other differences in the physical properties of nickel and sodium Okay, so the keyword here, it says that nickel is a transition element and a stronger than sodium. And then you need to state two other different in terms of their physical properties. So as we all know that nickel is a element, a transition metal element. So where is the transition metal element? The transition metal element is located at the middle of the predict table. Okay, you need to compare in terms of physical properties. So here you know that it's a metal. So normally metal, it can conduct electricity, right? But in terms of physical properties, you can state that it has higher density. So it here, uh, sorry, it should be nickel has higher density than sodium, okay? So actually, sodium is from the group one metal. So other than that, you can state that nickel, because it's a metal, and nickel normally is a higher, has higher melting point and boiling point. So nickel has higher melting point and boiling point. Then you will get to mark here. Okay, easy, right? So now we move on to the question E. Predict one difference in the appearance of aqueous solution of nickel compound compared to the aqueous solution of sodium compound. Okay, so for here, to answer this question, the key one here is you need to state the appearance of aqueous solution of nickel compound. So actually, we already know that nickel is come from the transition metal element. So we know that transition metal element is a colored compound. But for sodium compound, it's a group one. It's actually, it's a colorless compound. So here, you can uh, write the answer such as the solutions of nickel compound are colored if you know the color for the nickel compound is actually is green in color so you can write it down too okay then you will get one mark here right okay next we move on to the question f okay so this question is about uh, electrolytic refining so let's read the question so copper is refined or purified by electrolysis, nickel can be refined using a similar method. So this diagram shows the refining of nickel by electrolysis. You need to complete the level in the box. So here it shows you that how it set up uh, the experiment for the electrolysis, okay, for electrolytic refining. So in order to answer the question, you need to understand what is the meaning of refining or electrolytic refining okay so by definition electrolytic refining is the process of obtaining pure metal element from impure metal okay so here i give you the technique to answer this question you can do which is the formula which is oil rate okay so here it says that oxidation i lose reduction i gain so as you can see, it's already stated that this is a positive terminal, right? Or positive electrode. So I just write down here, positive electrode. So positive electrode is anode. We call it anode. And also here is a negative electrode. 
we call as a cathode. So those who undergo oxidation is normally at anode. So anode is always undergo oxidation. Okay, we tend to lose electron. While cathode is always undergo reduction. So what is reduction? Reduction means it gains an electron. Okay, here, because your aim is to get a pure nickel. In this case, it's a nickel. So, cathode is always is made up of pure nickel because you will get, okay, an electron from the anode. Okay, here should be impure nickel. Okay, so the impure nickel tends to lose the electron. Okay, it will lose an electron. And then it will accept by the cathode. Then at the cathode, your nickel will be deposited. Okay. And then for the electrolyte, so for the electrolyte, uh, it must contain the ions of the refined metal here. So in this case, it's a nickel. So you should write down which is aqueous nickel salt. Okay. So here, why nickel salt? Okay, you need to know that for electrolyte, it must be an ionic compound. Okay, and then you need to state the uh, whether it's an aqueous or in a solution. Okay, because electrolysis can only be made in when they are in aqueous or molten or in a solution. Okay, so let's say if you want to write down the ionic compound, you can write down such as uh, aqueous. Okay, aqueous nickel nitrate. This one also can you give you mark here. Then you'll get total three mark. Okay, so here indicate by writing N on the diagram where nickel is produced. So simple. So nickel will be produced at the cathode, right? So you can just write at the bottom, okay, at the cathode electrode here. Then you will get one mark here. Easy, right? So remember, anode or positive electrode always undergo oxidation process where negative electrode or we call it as a cathode will always undergo reduction process. So reduction is a will gain the electron. Next, we move on to the question, new question here, which is in May, June 2019. So let's read the question together. So, solution of ionic compound can be broken down by electrolysis. So, question A here, concentrated aqueous copper to chloride was electrolyte used using the apparatus shown. So, as you can see, uh, for electrolysis, you need to have power supply. And then the cathode made up of platinum and then the uh, positive electrode here, which is we call as an anode, also made up of platinum. Given you the electrolyte, which is concentrated aqueous copper to chloride. Okay, so here they ask you, the question is, the ionic half equation for the reaction at the electrode I shown. So actually here it says that negative electrode, copper 2 plus aqueous will accept the electron or it will undergo a reduction process to become copper solid. And then positive electrode will undergo oxidation Okay, we tend to lose electron to become chlorine gas. Cl2G in the state of G, which is gas, plus two electron. Okay, question number one here. Platinum is a solid which is a good conductor of electricity. You need to state one other property of platinum which make it suitable for use as electron. Okay, so here we ask you, about one other property of platinum. So other than platinum is a good conductor of electricity. Why? Because platinum is located at the middle of the periodic metal, metal, sorry, metal. So that's the reason why it can conduct electricity. Another one that make it suitable to use as electrode because it does not react with the electrolyte. Okay, it does not react with electrolyte so that means okay so that means it will not interfere the product okay at uh, of your desired metal here 
So next, we move on to the question two here. State what will be seen at the positive electrode during this electrode electrolysis. Okay, so what question here? What will be seen at the positive electrode? So we refer back to the question. So this is the positive electrode. Okay, so here you see that chloride ion in aqueous. Okay, the product is a chlorine gas. So you will see, you will obtain a gas. So can you see a gas? Yes. Okay, by how? Actually, you can see at the positive electrode, this bubble will be released. Okay, bubble of fizzing was observed at the positive electrode. Okay, then you will get one mark here. Okay, easy, right? So let's say, uh, actually, for because you will get a chlorine gas, so normally chlorine is a, in a green color gas. Okay, then next we move on to the question three here. State and explain what would happen to the mass of the negative electrode during the electrolysis. Okay, here you need to state and explain what happened to the mass of negative electrode? So we move, uh, we refer back to the question here. So at the negative electrode, okay, we see it's at the cathode. So copper 2 plus ion will accept the electron. Okay, it becomes copper solid. So if we accept the electron, so that means the mass will be increased. Why increase? Because it accepts the electron. Okay, so here you can see that it will increase. Okay, why it will increase? Because copper deposited at the electrode. Okay, then you will get one mark here and also one mark here. Okay, so those who accept the electron the mass at the electrode will be increased. And those who tend to lose an electron, the mass at the electrode will be decreased. Okay? And then next, we move on to the question for here. So the concentrated aqueous copper to chloride electrolyte is a green color. Suggest what would happen to the color of the electrolyte during this electrolysis you need to explain your answer. Given you, here is two mark. Okay, the keyword here, the concentrated aqueous copper to chloride is a green color. So what would happen if uh, in the electrolyte, during the electrolysis? So as you know that electrolysis is involved electron transfer, oxidation and reduction process, right? So here, Let's say, I just give you overview about this. Okay, let's say you have an electrolyte such as copper to chloride. Okay, so this electrolyte during electrolysis it will split up into ion. So you tend to get copper to plus and also chloride ion, right? So what happened to the color? So originally it's a green color, but during the electrolysis, okay, it will fade. The color of the electrolyte will be fade because it's involved ion transfer here. Okay, and then the reason you can state that the color fades, okay, or it becomes paler. Okay, why it becomes paler? Because copper ions remove from the solution. Okay, so that you will get two mark here. So remember, so during electrolysis, it involves uh, splitting the ionic compound. So here, why uh, the copper electrolyte from green color, it become fade because copper ion will remove from the solution. Okay, that's the reason. So question number five here, you need to identify the species that is oxidized during this electrolysis. Explain your answer. So here, the key one here, you need to identify the species that is oxidized. 
So what are the species that oxidize? Is the one that undergo oxidation process. So what is oxidation process? Which is I lose an electron. So we refer back to the question here. Okay. So the one that lose an electron is from the positive electron. Okay. Which is chloride ion in aqueous the product. Okay. Uh, it becomes chlorine gas plus two electron here. Okay. So the answer, the, the species that is oxidized, can write down here, which is chloride ion. Okay. Or you can write down SCL minus. For the explanation, because of it lose an electron. Okay. So it lose an electron here. Then you will get one mark here. Okay. So simple as that. Okay. So next we move on to the question B here. Okay. So this question is about electroplating. So let's read the question together. So a metal object can be electroplated with silver. Describe how a metal spoon can be electroplated with silver. You need to include, which is what to use as the positive electron and as the negative electron here. What to use as the electrolyte. And then you need to uh, write down the ionic half equation to show the formation of silver. You may include a diagram in your answer here. Okay, so here, as you can see, total mark is four mark. So in order to answer this question, first you need to understand what is the definition of electroplated with silver. Or we can say that electroplating, okay, in the process of electroplating is a process of depositing a layer of a desired metal with another substance. So I just write down the definition here. So electroplating called as a uh, is a process of depositing a layer of any design metal with another material. Okay. So this is the definition of uh, electroplating. Okay, so in this case, for this question, depositing a layer with any desired material is referred to the silver, right? And then with another material here is referred to the spoon. So this is the one that you're going to be electrolyzed. Okay, and then here in order to know what to use as the positive electrode and, at, uh, and for the negative electrode, here, you can set up the experiment, which is for electrolysis. You need to have a power supply. So you can label here as a power supply. And then you need to have two connecting wire here. One will be a positive electron. One will be a negative electron. So the positive electron, or we call it an anode, is always undergo oxidation process. So what is oxidation process? It's the process that can... To lose the electron. So here it should be pure nickel. Sorry, pure silver. Okay. And then negative electron with undergo reduction process, which is gain the electron from the silver. This one you can draw like a spoon here. Okay, so this is the spoon. So you level. So what about the electrolyte? So for the electrolyte, okay, it must contain the metal ion that contain uh, metal that you want to be electroplated, which is silver. So here you can uh, write down such as silver nitrate solution. Don't forget. Okay, it must be in the form of aqueous oxygen solution for electrolysis. And also, it must contain, it, it must from the ionic compound. So, what is the ionic compound? Ionic compound is a, a compound that contains metal and also non-metal. So, here is how you want to set up for this experiment. Okay, so for this 
experiment, you can see that pure silver, you tend to lose an electron, okay, and then will be accepted. So here we change to another color here, easy for you to see. So here for pure silver, it will lose an electron and then will be accepted by spoon here, will be electroplated at spoon. Okay, why? Because at spoon here is a, a negative electron or reduction, the process of accept the electron. Okay, mm -hmm. so here let's we move on to how to write down the half equation to show the formation of silver. Because silver, we tend to lose an electron. So here, Ag is solid, will donate an electron to become Ag plus. Okay, plus in equals plus electron here. Okay, so this is the first equation. And then the second equation, because it says that it to, to, form, uh, to show the formation of silver, so Ag plus in equals product here, which is Ag in solid, okay, to show the formation of electron. Okay, sorry here. Okay, because it's a reduction, so that means you need to accept an electron and then at the end, you will get Ag in solid. Then you will get one mark here, one mark here. Okay, so I hope you understand about this. Just using this formula, which is oil rate. Okay, so next we move on to the question number two here. Give one reason why metal spoons are electroplated with silver. So actually the reason why electroplating is made is because of to improve the appearance. Okay. Improve appearance. Or this one, another point that you can give, such as to prevent corrosion. Okay, then you will get one mark here. So these are the example of why electroplating uh, is made. It's because to improve the appearance and also to prevent corrosion. Okay, so next we move on to the question October, November in 2018. So this question is about electrolysis. So first question is, what is mean by the term electrolysis? So actually, in order to answer this question, you need to fulfill the marks here. Okay, to mark. Okay, and all, in order to write down the full definition, actually you can get it from the word itself. So electrolysis is come from the word electro, meaning electric current. Okay, and lysis is actually a process which is breaking down. So here you have an idea which is electric current and also breaking down. So how to write down the full definition for electrolysis? Here you can write down which is electrolysis. Okay, electrolysis is the process or is the breakdown of ionic compound when molten okay or in aqueous solution using electric current okay so this is the definition of Electrolysis is the process or breakdown of ionic compound. It must be ionic compound. When it's molten, you need to state the um, ionic compound. This is either in a molten or in an aqueous solution by using electric current. Okay, so next we move on to the question two. Name the type of particle responsible for the conduction of electricity during electrolysis in. Okay, here, the keyword here, you need to name the type of particle for the conduction of electricity. So, to answer this question, the for the metal wire, it should be electron, right? Because electron will be moved, okay, uh, in, the, uh, in the metal wires and then the electrolyte is a, actually is a ions, right? So, in the electrolysis, in the electron, it will speed up the ion. 
the ionic compound. It comes from the ionic compound. Okay, next we move on to question B. The table gives information about the product of the electrolysis of two electrolytes. Platinum electrodes are used in each case. Give reason why platinum is suitable to use an electrode. Okay. So here you need to state the reason once again why platinum is suitable to use an electrode. So before this, you already know that platinum can be used as an electrode because it can conduct electricity and also it does not react with the electrolyte. It will not interfere at the end of the product. So that's the reason. So I just give the uh, extra information here for electrolysis. Uh, other than platinum, we normally we use which is we call as a uh, graphite. It's made up of carbon. So graphite also can be used as an electrode because it can conduct electricity and also it does not react with uh, electrolyte. Okay. So here you can write down which is is um does not react with electrolyte and the other one is because of course it can conduct it can conduct electricity because in uh, during electrolysis you need have you need to have electric current in order to spill up the ionic compound okay then Next, we move on to the last question here. Okay, you need to complete the table given you two electrolytes. One is a concentrated aqueous potassium chloride and then the other one is aqueous copper 2 sulfate. Okay, you need to fill up the table here. What is the observation at the anode? Name of the product at the anode. And also here, what observation at the cathode, which is negative electron. And name of the product at the cathode, negative electrode here. So you need to uh you need to understand that to answer the question, and then you need to remember uh remember that two elements can be produced at the electrode. Okay, why two elements can be produced? Because it contains aqueous here, the word aqueous. So aqueous is actually come from the water. Okay, which is, it contain an element of hydrogen ion and also hydroxide ion. So here, name of the product at the anode, which is positive electrode. So those who attracted at the positive electrode or at the anode is the one that contain negative ion. Okay, uh, here, chloride, okay, or OH, hydroxide ion, chloride ion. Or OH ion. So which one will be discharged is actually is a chloride ion. Okay. Why chloride ion? Because the word here, the key word here is the concentrated. So even though that the position of hydroxide will be uh, will be selected, but because of it says that concentrated, concentrated, so that means chloride ion will be produced at the and not okay so here you can state that this is a chlorine or chloride ion the okay, observation at the anode because this one for the anode is always undergo oxidation process right so oxidation process so observation at the anode here you can see actually a green or yellow bubbles okay so what about cathode here so cathode is a negative electrode so those who attract at the cathode is contain positive ion okay so here the positive ion it could be H okay come from the aqueous hydrogen ion and also potassium ion which is K plus okay so which which one will be discharged at the cathode is definitely hydrogen ion. Why hydrogen ion? Because hydrogen ion located at the bottom. Okay, so ion hydrogen ion will be discharged at the cathode or will be selected at the cathode. So this one you can just write down. 
hydrogen. Okay, simple as that. Okay, next we move on to the uh, second electrolyte here, aqueous copper to sulfate. Okay, so here, it says again, uh, you need to know that there will be two elements that will be selected at the anode. Okay, so here, aqueous, it contains H plus and also OH minus. So at the anode, the ion that will be attracted, which is OH and also copper, so, sorry, SO4 to minus. Okay, so here, as you can see, uh, hydrogen ion will be discharged, will be selected because of hydrogen ion located at the bottom. So here, the product at the anode, it should be oxygen. Okay, why oxygen? Is because hydroxide ion, okay, will be tend to remove, okay, will donate two electrons and then the product, this is such as you can get water and also oxygen. So, the product, of course, you will get oxygen here. Okay. So, next, we move on to the name of the uh, product at the cathode. So, at the cathode, positive ion will be attracted, which is H+, plus and also copper 2+. plus. Okay. So, those for hydrogen ion and copper 2 plus here. Okay, those to be selected at the cathode is definitely is copper. Okay, so this write down copper here. So why copper? The reason why copper will be selected because uh, the position of copper is below than hydrogen ion. So that's why copper will be discharged at the cathode or copper will be selected at the cathode. Okay, so what is the observation at cathode? You can see that write down brown solid deposited. Okay, we will deposit it at the cathode. Then you will get six mark here. Okay, so simple, right? So you just need to remember uh, for electrolysis, especially in uh, in aqueous, there will be two elements that will be produced at the anode and the cathode, and then you need to select which one is the least reactive will be selected at the anode or cathode. Okay, and so this is the summary. Okay, we just end our question here. So here I just want to recap what you need to remember for this topic, especially reactivity series of metal and also uh, electrolysis, you need to know what is the definition of this specimen, uh, and then electrolysis, and then don't forget to use the formula, which is oil rig, oil, oil represent oxidation, I lose an electron, and also reduction, which is I gain an electron. And also for electroplating, the object to be electroplated is made at the cathode. Okay, and then the plating metal is made at the anode, which is your positive electron. And then for the electrolyte, you need to have some ions of the plating metal. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, so we just end our class today. So thank you for spending your time, your weekend with me. So I hope that you learned something. And before I end the session, so kindly fill up in the, in the Google uh, form at the comment section below. So if you have any recommendation or suggestion, you can write it down there. And I just want to let you know that if you are interested in our foundation program, Currently, we have two foundations, which is foundation in science and also foundation in business. So if you want to more, know more about that, you can refer to MASA website. So I think with that, I will end the session. Thank you and enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Bye. See you next time.